Something I love doing during GOTV, especially during early vote, is telling people, if you go vote, we will stop calling you. The best way to get off our lists, right, is to vote. Because once you vote, we love you, we appreciate you, but we don't care anymore, right? Okay, what are some of the best tactics to focus on when time is so short until election day? Um, can we start with you, Jess? Yeah, I, I think I might repeat a little bit about what I said earlier, but the most important thing to do when time is short is to focus on your direct voter contact. Some folks call it DVC. Make sure you're, you're canvassing when you can, um, phone banking being really big during the times of COVID, um, texting if your campaign has a texting program, um, and being sure that you're training your volunteers to be able to do that really efficiently and so that they, they don't uh, make some large mistakes like putting lit in a mailbox. Like it's still important as we're going and going during GOTV to train your volunteers to do direct voter contact. Yeah, spot on. Um, Sarah Joy, anything on this? Yeah, I think best tactics, I think, especially in the final weeks, I think it's really about two buckets. Um, one being voter education and thinking about Virginia, for example, um, there's a lot that we can do around voter ed um, because early voting started yesterday. Um, no excuse, early voting is new in Virginia. So there's just a huge opportunity for the campaign to reach out to voters and start banking votes now. But that can only really happen if voters know that early vote is available to them. Um, and while we're doing this like voter education, it's also really important that we're helping um, voters make a plan to actually get to their to get their ballots in. Um, so yeah, I think it's those buckets. And then while you're like navigating those things, you're still doing a lot of GOTV recruitment, get out the vote recruitment to make sure you have volunteers coming in um, to also support those conversations that you're having. Um, so yeah, I think it's just really important to have strong voter education um, and mobilization happening at the same time. That's awesome. Jordan, yeah. I just wanna um, echo what Jess said about uh, doors. Uh, they are just so critical and you know they we their study after study shows that they are the best way to get people to go to the polls old fashioned 18th century technology just going to talk to people and having a conversation and say we need you know please go make a plan to go vote um so i just wanted to highlight uh that again and i just want to you know some of the other things that i've um you know, help to be helpful is to walk people through the process themselves. So not just the pro, you know, ensure that they know what is available to them, especially as states open up all of these new opportunities, ensure that they know what's what they can and cannot do. But I also let my good voters, the people who are supporting us know why we need them to vote early. You know, I let them know, hey, if we can get you to vote early, that enables us to focus our last couple of days or our day on those folks who we're not sure are going to go vote and we need to go vote to win. So I also let them in on our strategies for GOTV. I try to bring them along in that process so that we can clear out those good voters. Like, there are plenty of good voters who are older voters who are like, I just want to vote on election day. And I just say, like, if you can vote early, that would help us win. Like, you know, I just tell them that and I let them know, because if we can clear out good voters and have just those folks who are harder to reach, harder to get, harder to convince, we can we can ensure that our efforts are on those people in those closing moments, those closing days, we're all going to be better off. So I let, I let our folks know exactly what the plan is, um, as well as all of their options that are available. And I do that by door knocking and, and, and phone calls. <laughs> yeah, all that's. All oh, that's exactly exactly right. Um, and and you know to to kind of summarize everyone's point, right? The once you're at GOTV, you are really coming up against the clock, right? So you are constantly faced with that decision of what is the best use of my time or what is the best use of the candidate's time. And to everybody's point, it is going to be talking to voters that need that extra push. Something I love doing during GOTV, especially during early vote, is telling people, if you go vote, we will stop calling you. The best way to get off our lists, right, is to vote. Because once you vote, we love you, we appreciate you, but we don't care anymore, right? Um, so I think just being upfront, letting people in, you know, to that insider baseball of, we're going to call you until you vote. I have a great story for that. So I- Please. 
Um, I there's only one time I ever finished a list. Like everybody on my list went and voted in all the years I've been doing this. And I remember it was like 7:30, and I was literally just sitting across the street from this poor man's house waiting for him to come home. And he came home and I was like, hi, my name's Jordan. I'm here to encourage you to vote. He's like, I just got home. I don't know if it's gonna be worth it. And I was like, every other name on this list is crossed out. I'm gonna sit here and bother you until you go vote till eight o'clock. If you and I walk right now to the polls, it's right around the corner, I'm gonna be happy. You won't hear from me again. And he was like, all right, man. <laughs> um, That's exactly so- it. Yeah, I, I think like reminding people that like the sooner you vote, the sooner you'll stop hearing from me is one of the best ways to get people to go vote. Yeah, the sooner I will leave your literal porch. Yeah, yep, I love that. I love that. Um, I want to k- kind of talk about this, uh, you know, focusing on tactics. What about folks that live in um, more red areas or more rural districts where there just are fewer Democrats or there are fewer volunteers? Um, how do you suggest going about recruitment in those areas and, and still having the conversations you need. Um, let's go with Jess. Yeah, I, I think you start um, looking for volunteers in these red areas and sort of your, your typical groups looking on Facebook if you have um, a state or a county party group, um, indivisibles, um, all of those sort of like regional places that can support um, Democratic candidates and campaigns. And then from there, really doing like relational organizing, right? Like you have your base of volunteers, have them reach out to people they know, have them reach out to people and really build your network of people. And I think in a way that applies to voters as well. You can start with relational organizing to really walk in the folks um, who will be your base in those red districts. The, the only other thing I would add, and I just want to echo what Jess said, um, is start early. So, you know, mm. recruitment doesn't start two weeks, four weeks out. It starts as soon as you start your campaign, reminding people that you're going to need them most. Tuesday is a weird day. They might need to take off work. Um, you know, if you, uh, they probably will have to take off work. If they have six months to plan that out, you know, then you need to ask six months in advance. Um, So ensure that you're making those asks early on. And the other is just if there's a university around, see if there's some young people um, and do the same thing that Jess just mentioned. You You want to have those relationships, see if there's organizations. So just echo what Jess said. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kimberly Sweat, one of the NDTC's trainers. For more political training like this, please check out traindemocrats.org. Thank you so much for watching.